We debating, going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling, and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Casual wrestling show. We got opinions, we letting them know. Casual wrestling show. Hey, ain't no holding back. What is up, guys? This is the Casual Wrestling Community Show. I am the Notorious Nerdy D alongside my guy, Milwaukee Mike. Tonight, we are talking about Seth Rollins and WrestleMania. We are talking about weird money in the bank stipulations, and we are talking about the WWE experience. But first, Mike, I want to start off with Bully Ray went on his podcast, uh, and he talked about Seth Rollins and, and how he feels like Seth Rollins is essentially... <clears throat> maybe not a big enough star to stand on stage at the same time as the rock. And that this moment might overshadow Seth Rollins a little bit. What, what are your feelings on Seth Rollins ability to, to stand in a ring toe to toe with Dwayne Johnson and, and how does he stand up? And do you agree with bully Ray? Um, so I think there's not a right or wrong answer here, right? I mean, with Seth Rollins, in terms of the landscape of the WWE currently, he's a he's a megastar, right? And they've built him to be that with this long World Heavyweight Championship run. Um, in terms of him getting in the ring with The Rock, I mean, The Rock's The Rock. I mean, he's going to always surpass anybody that's standing with him in the ring. I mean, that's just the stature of who he is. Um, in terms of like a match type or quality between him and Rollins, you know, we've seen Rollins go against different kinds of opponents and different kinds of techniques that they bring to the ring. So I think he is somebody that is a natural worker in the ring. Um, I think he brings a lot of stuff to each individual match in terms of storytelling and different move sets that I think he could hang with The Rock. Um, I, I think I, re I can reference what you uh, what you were listening to from Bully Ray as well. Um, he mentioned that he wasn't initially a fan of the whole flashy outfits and the dancing and everything, which to an extent I can, I can, I can agree with that. You know, I don't mind the flashy outfits. I think the dancing could be a bit too much sometimes in terms of presentation, especially like this past week on raw, I was kind of looking for a little bit more seriousness coming to the ring, but you know, he had, a, he had, he shifted gears and got serious in the promo. So he brings a lot to the table, man. And, so does the rock so in terms of you know does he belong in the ring with the rock I, I would have to say yeah so so here's my opinion is i think we give the rock this unfair advantage against everybody when we when we start to look back and we go nostalgic and we go the rock was was phenomenal the rock played by a whole different set of rules that then the guys that are wrestling today have to live by the rock was allowed to say whatever he wanted. He was allowed to be as offensive as he wanted. He was allowed to sexualize women. Th this was a time when all that shit was okay. And, and we've grown away from that as, as just a society and as far as wrestling goes. And now we're in an era where these wrestlers are expected to cut responsible promos. Seth Rollins is not allowed to just go out and wow the 35 to, to 45 year old audience. He has to speak to, to the kids. He has to speak to, to women. He has to speak to adults. So I think there's this weird handicap and Bully Ray coming from that era. I, I can understand why his mentality is that, but I think here's the thing. If we cut the ropes and, and cut the chains off of Seth Rollins, I think a hundred percent he can stand in the ring with the rock. I think Seth Rollins is one of the more clever people inside of WWE. I just don't think he crosses that line. The issue with everybody who gets in the ring with the rock right now is the rock continues to play by the old rules. The rock gets the crowd chanting things that, that if anybody else had the crowd chanting those things, they'd go to the back and, and they'd be scolded. But because he's the rock, he's allowed to play by those rules. I don't, I, I get it, right? The rock is fucking huge. And, and he's probably, I'm not, allegedly, probably on everything you can put in your body that makes you look unhuman. Because he doesn't look human. He looks, how do you go from a guy who was 6'4", 240, to now 6'4", probably 3'10", and it's all muscle? Like, yeah. th th like that's not, these are unfair 
expectations that we're putting on a guy, Seth Rollins, who has to wrestle 365 times a year. It's not fair to compare their stature. It's not fair to compare the way they talk in promos. It's, I, I think Bully Ray, did a dis, uh, Bully Ray did a disservice by comparing them that way. To get to what you said about being in the ring, do I think he belongs in the ring with The Rock? I think he's going to run circles around The Rock if he's in the ring with The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think, once again, we live in this nostalgic world where we think The Rock's going to be able to go, what, 10 minutes at best before he completely gasses out and it turns into The Rock just hitting those signature rock spots, spine buster, people's elbow, rock bottom, DDT. The Rock's not putting on a five-star match. Seth Rollins can put on a five-star match. So I... I think that sometimes there's these unfair, like nostalgic references that get made to people when when it's it's comparing apples to oranges. It's not apples to apples. So Seth Rollins was was dropped into the middle of the Attitude Era. He would be just fine. It, it's the it's the rule set that you're forced to play within, and we can't do this thing where we compare, uh, you know, compare just john cena to john cena compare the john cena when the when the chains were taken off and he was allowed to to do the thugonomics and those kind of riskier things versus when they made the decision to go pg and john cena had to adjust and do those things i i'm with you i'm not like i'm not a huge seth rollins person i i don't love the the clothes and stuff but i understand that's also not necessarily meant for me I don't love the Joker the way some people love the Joker as a villain. And I think here's the, here's the deal. If they turn Seth Rollins loose and they let him play the Joker, that, that all makes sense. The eccentric costumes and all that stuff. He, he can handle when they go after his shoes. He always comes back ready. When they go after his clothes, he always comes back ready. I feel like he goes jab for jab with Roman. And I think he can do the same thing with The Rock. It's it's whether or not he's allowed to play by the same rule book. And if The Rock gets to just come out and say whatever he wants, that's not fair. Versus if they if they take the reins off of of Seth, I think he he will be just fine. I, I honestly do. I don't think that's a fair comparison. I like what you said. I I think we've seen Seth wrestle everybody, and I've never seen a Seth Rollins match that I've left and gone. Oh, Seth, Seth didn't do that well. Like, that's not what we say about Seth Rollins. That, yeah, that, that's, not the, that. that's, that's just not the, the MO for him. All right, Mike, 100%. what you got? So the WWE is set to open the WWE experience in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia this week. My question to you is, why do you believe the WWE went the Saudi route with this and they have not come to terms with anything in the United States in terms of um exhi exhibits museums theme parks you name it in terms of a, like a travel source for people to come enjoy with their family so i i the reason they went saudi arabia i'm 100 percent convinced is saudi arabia asked for this i believe that the prince the king whatever it is over there he asked for this this is he's interested in this he has the money to back this thing up in case it it's not successful i believe there's a partnership involved in this thing so that they can keep this experience open in a place that's hungry for wrestling content as far as the united states goes or or you know even north america not having a wwe experience i think we do have it, it it's wrestlemania it's it's the week of wrestlemania is that experience and and I'll, I'll tell you this like have you ever been to comic con i have not so comic con's great for two or three days i i don't think you could open a building that's comic con year round what makes that that wrestlemania fan access so special is the excitement of everybody that's in the building at the same time i don't think it feels that way if you just go in september to a building that is the wwe hall of fame or or the wwe experience I don't know. Like those things have been tried before. I think WWE can point to like the NBA. The NBA had the NBA restaurant. And every time I ever went in the NBA restaurant, there was nobody there because they seem like such good ideas in principle. But the problem is you have to operate 365 days a year with expenses and, and you have to generate excitement all the time. And for fan access, 
it's fairly simple to get people to get excited for a weekend for the Super Bowl, for, for the WrestleMania. You get all of these people who come in at the same time they get to see all of the historical robes from, from Ric Flair and, and the historical titles. <clears throat> that's, that's not a problem. I think it's harder to operate 365 days a year and, and justify this, the, the, the specific building. I, as far as like a Hall of Fame goes, yeah, sure, you could, you could put that in the Performance Center. You could put that in Universal Studios or something like that. But I, sometimes I wonder if the WWE and, and is just not worried about like controlling and, and licensing and, you know, does it become too gimmicky? Does it need a roller coaster if it's at Universal Studios? And, and sometimes I think WWE might just be content with, hey, this is kind of the selling point of going to WrestleMania. And do we take a little bit of that excitement away if you can do this any time of the year, not just at WrestleMania? That That's kind of my thoughts on, on, on that. Like, ha, have you ever been to the NFL Hall of Fame? Uh, not yet. Is it something like you're just highly aspiring to go do? I think in passing, probably I would stop. Like yeah. if, yeah, but, but I mean, it's not, you're not seeking that, that experience out. I don't know that hall sure. of fames, while they seem great and I'm with you, like if I was in the area, it's definitely something I'm going to do, but I don't think I right. build a vacation around going to the WWE hall of fame or, or sure. the NFL hall of fame or the NBA hall of fame. I think they are experiences that are part of bigger experiences like WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that got me thinking your, your answer there. Um, and I do agree with you. I think if they were to try and do something in the United States, I think it would be at an already established theme park, um, like a Universal. Mm -hmm. And the way the way I would go about it is, I'm sure everybody's been to a theme park. Mm -hmm. the 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 line to wait is kind of like an experience. They'll set it up and they'll have different like things and and settings and whatnot. I think you could probably do that, like have some kind of a a, a theme theme you know themed ride or maybe it's like some kind of a simulation and have like different props and stuff set up along the way as you're waiting um just kind of make it like a, a little tiny experience i guess but yeah i i, I i'm with you I, I don't think you could set up a whole building and just wait on people to come because you know how many times are people that's like a one and done kind of thing yeah exactly so, how many times do you want to go do that right so yeah I think people would enjoy it, but after a while, I think you would see business kind of go down and plateau, and I think that's where you would have a problem. And then, like, my my question from, like, just flipping onto the other side of being like Universal Studios, is one WWE small attraction, and like, because you know they're going to make you pay for that, like, WWE for the licensing and all that shit, is that enough to attract them to go, this is going to bring enough people in that we can justify this? Or is this sure. one of those things where, where everybody just looks at it and goes, yeah, sure, it would be really cool. There's just not enough want for this. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, Shrek and, and Shrek and all those guys seem to be doing fine at Universal <laughs> Studios. I don't know that, like, you have to have John Cena to sell, <laughs> to sell me to go to Universal Studios. <laughs> I agree. All right, Mike, I got another question for you here. Uh, Sounds good. Damian Priest, he went on a podcast and he talked about his money in the bank briefcase and why he has not cashed in yet. And his explanation was that with Seth Rollins not being medically cleared and Roman Reigns being on another show, there's just zero opportunity for him to cash in the money in the bank at this point in time. My question for you is, number one, do you think that that information was fed to him by WWE? And number two, if this is an actual new mechanic of money in the bank, is this is this a smart mechanic for the booking of money in the bank going forward? So I kind of I kind of mesh my answers together. Um, it's it's a weird comment to put out, right? And it almost makes you think that there's some kind of damage control being played here between him and the WWE, because maybe they don't necessarily have the plan yet for him to cash in. Um, I've thought about this because I've seen I seen the the comment that he made, and it's got me wondering: was he the first choice they had to win Money in the Bank, or was it circumstantial? <sighs> and when when you start to think about that, you start to think of the couple months before Money in the Bank, where he had the match with Bad Bunny. Was that kind of like a hey, you sell out for <laughs> Bad Bunny, we give you this? 
because to say that you can't cash in because somebody's injured, I mean, that's the whole point of money in the bank. <laughs> when somebody's down and out, you're supposed to be like, hey, I'm going to get this damn title. So it, it's really got me thinking, like, was he the actual first choice or was this like circumstantial? And we don't know what the hell to do with you right at this point. <clears throat> I, I think you're exactly right. I think that's literally where I was going to take this is I think this was an overreaction to Puerto Rico. A hundred percent. He went out there. He showed out. He, he put on a show with Bad Bunny and WWE goes, oh, shit, people, people like Damien. We're going to have to we're going to have to put a rocket on him. And I think they overreacted. I think they had no plan. I think they always assume we've got 365 days to figure this out. We're going to we give a guy a briefcase. We've got a long time to make something happen. And then what happens is you're halfway through or three quarters through the run and and you've booked yourself into some pro, uh, problem problematic situations here with the world heavyweight championship. You know, we we've got Drew who looks like he's waiting. We, we've got uh, Seth Rollins, who could easily continue as champion. We've got CM Punk, who, had he not got injured, looked like he might have been next in line. And so, yeah, where does Damian Priest fall in line as far as, as the World Heavyweight Championship? And I, I absolutely, I think that he got sat down, he got put on the spot, and Damian Priest has to protect Damian Priest. At that point, it's not his responsibility to protect the WWE, and he's got to go, yeah, no, I know my character looks like an idiot, but let me explain to you why I look like an idiot. There's just nowhere for me to, to cash this in. I wish they would make that clearer on television that yeah. he's unable to cash in because, I yeah, that's never been a thing. The, the whole point of Money in the Bank has been it is this opportunity to catch someone off guard. And, and I think that if, if that's a mechanic of money in the bank, then I would like to see money in the bank just be a contract that you can cash in at any premium live event where you guarantee yourself a title match. Not that you can run out and tease it after the match. And, and I've always thought money in the bank was a little bit hokey in the sense that like guys will come out and try to cash it in. They get hit one time and then they're done trying. Like get back up and, and cash it in again. You, you don't yeah. just get the one chance that night. And, and I, I think for Damian Priest, it does feel a little hokey. You're in one of the most dominant factions on Monday Night Raw right now. And y'all have made kind of uh, entertainment living bullying people. And you're telling me y'all can't go out there and surround Seth Rollins and hold him down and, and win the World Heavyweight Championship? So I, I understand 100% Damian Priest coming out and, and creating an excuse for why he can't do it. I just think that WWE has a responsibility to get behind him and either explain that, oh, this is a rule, or maybe Damien didn't understand, but they, they do have, well, I think they're good problems to have. I'll, I'll state that. It's a good problem when you've got too many guys that could be your world heavyweight champion. I just think Damien Priest ends up on the outside of this thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, there's a lot of people in waiting, and I think a lot of people are assuming that it's WrestleMania 40 that he's going to cash in, but I'm telling you, man, the longer this goes... I'm I'm starting to wonder. Yeah, it feels like Judgment Day is losing steam. Like, have you? This is not something we plan to talk about, but have you noticed they just will not put Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley in a ring together anymore? Yeah, that's that's kind of gone off. And then another another thing that I've also wondered is like, well, we have to kind of look at Finn and Damian still having those tag titles. There's no way they're going to have tag titles and a World Heavyweight Champion at the same time. It, it, just, it just logistically, that doesn't make sense. Well, and I'm so reading I, I, Finn's done. Okay. After WrestleMania. That's what I've, everything that I've read is Finn's not re-signing. Finn wants to go work with the elite that, that he's kind of done with WWE. So that was interesting to me. Well, I guess we'll see then, huh? Yeah. All right. What you got? What's your uh, last question here? So now that we have a WrestleMania 40 main event between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, who do you believe would suffer the most from a loss on their path moving forward. All right, so you got to break it down, right? There's two two possibilities. Cody Rhodes loses and people are probably done. Like I I know I am. I'm done with the story. If you this is that's how the story ends for me. If you lose at WrestleMania 40, it 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 ends with with the last chapter was it's a, it's a tragedy. It's no longer going to be the journey of a hero. If Roman loses, it's the end of an era, 
But I don't like. I look at what's post WrestleMania. If Roman's not champion, he anything he wants. Like he's. I think he's grown beyond even needing a title. He can fight. You know, you can roll right out of WrestleMania if if Roman loses. Let's say he loses to Cody. Rock cost him the match. You immediately can roll Roman into a match with the Rock, and nobody's really going to be talking about the title. They're going to be talking about Rock and Roman. You're going to get what you thought WrestleMania was going to be just post WrestleMania. I think that Cody Rhodes absolutely stands to lose the most from from going into WrestleMania and failing. I don't think you can do it twice. I really don't. I don't think that you can finish this journey anywhere else now, especially not after the support and the crowd swell that came with this thing. I think... Had the fans not got behind him, you could have sold this as some kind of swerve. I know people are saying, like, Seth could turn on him. They're saying, you know, The Rock could cost him the match. I just really feel like at this point, if Cody doesn't win this one, I I already hear a lot of whispers of people who are tired of Cody. And so if you don't get it done and we have to go another six months hearing you talk about how you're going to finish the story for your dad and for the fans, I, I just don't think you can sell that to people long term. Roman will always have the fallout of the bloodline to fall back on. They can continue a civil war for a whole nother year. And then you ask the question really is how much more time will Roman wrestle if he's not champion? I mean, is he bound for Hollywood? Does he, does he lose to Cody, take his match with the rock and then go home? Well, then it really costs him nothing. It's just kind of, we're in the final chapter of Roman reigns. I, I, Cody has nothing if he loses at WrestleMania. There's there's no nothing set up after that for him. Yeah. Uh, it's man. so with Cody, right? With Cody, I I do believe that if he does lose, I agree with you. The path after WrestleMania is very blurry and there's no real like situation where you like well maybe there is okay maybe the situation is that it, the match gets interfered with somebody costs him the match and we can continue on down the road but like you mentioned the fans how much longer are the fans going to keep up with this i mean you could you could go that route but listen man after the quack uh crowd swell like you said i you gotta strike while it's hot man and Listen, it doesn't have to be a long title run because, in fact, I would like to see the title kind of bounce around now after Roman's held it for, what, goddamn three years? Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Cody has the most to 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 lose in terms of losing at WrestleMania. If Roman loses, I think there's the other stories that you can do. I think you can set up the Rock and Roman, which I think doesn't need a title, and this is how you get there without a title. Um, like you said, you could do kind of a Civil War kind of thing. Um we can see maybe solo turn, you know, the, the Usos, what happens with that. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can go with Roman losing. Um, so I, I would have to say Cody suffers the most from a WrestleMania 40 loss. Now, I'll just quick question on you. You brought up solo. I saw a statistic and is, I don't know if this is real. Solo is 0 and 23 since fighting John Cena. Is that that's I that's, that's got to be house shows included, right? It's got to be because I have not seen I have not seen him in no twenty matches. This was just a Facebook graphic, which could be completely bullshit. But I mean, yeah, it doesn't I, feel like to, he's won a match since that, though. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I don't think it's been. Yeah, it's got to include house. Shows, it has man. to be. Has sure. to be house house shows as well. That's that's crazy sure. to me. Zero and twenty three yeah, after sure. beating John Cena. That just shows you sometimes they don't necessarily know where they're going with the stories. Apparently not. All right, let's uh, let's reach into the mailbag here. This question comes okay. from Wavy D and B Master in the Discord. They ask, "How could WWE book a participant from outside the company to win the Royal Rumble?" Uh, we've talked about this. I I don't know how you do this. I I don't know how you make this work from a business standpoint. For somebody to come in from another company, which WWE has a track record of treating everybody like they're inferior to WWE, having them come in and win your Royal Rumble and challenge for your title, unless that person is just going to get absolutely destroyed in the main event of WrestleMania, I I don't know how you book this. I, I've racked it around in my head. I can't figure it out. 
Yeah, my best my best answer is if it would be somebody that was in WWE at one point, left, went somewhere else, maybe got a little momentum, came back, similar to like, like what Cody Rhodes did. I could see a situation like that, but somebody that like nobody knows or it's not well known coming in, I, th the business is just too solid for for that to be allowed to happen. I yeah, think in my, just, in my in my eyes, it feels like it just devalues every person on your roster. Like that's yeah. that's the problem. Like the IWC love to do this thing where it's like, oh no, the th forbidden doors are great. They're not because. WWE spends all its time saying to be a WWE superstar is to be the best at what you do. And then to have an outsider come in and beat 30 of your best people, just, I can't, there's no way I can book that. Maybe they can book it and they can tell us in discord, but there's no way I can book that. Hey, I, I, I'm clueless on that as well. All right, Mike, let's finish off the show with a new segment. It's, it's Mike's last minute. You had something that you wanted to talk about. The floor is yours to, to talk about whatever you want right here. All right, let me take a deep breath real quick. <laughs> All right, so this has to do with AEW and that IWC that we love to talk about, right? Something happened last night on AEW that I don't personally watch. I'll come out straight forward and say that I am a WWE fan. I do not watch AEW. Do I pay attention? Yes, but the only way I pay attention is through Twitter, the, the dirt sheets, and the reporters that report on it, right? So I see last night that Darby Allen cuts a promo, and in the promo, he references Cody Rhodes as a former EVP. Uh huh. And the crowd starts to chant Cody Rhodes' name. Now, let me let me let me let me back this up here. I want to start by saying that. A lot of people in the IWC believe that AEW is WWE's competition. And I totally disagree with that because competition means you are on almost level playing fields. And this is not the case. WWE is head and shoulders above all wrestling companies and will remain that way until the end of time. I think they're a good alternative. And that's how I view them as an alternative, right? It's something for people to tune into as something to kind of get away from WWE if you want or other promotions if you're into other promotions but in terms of competition they're not even close and the, the numbers state that blatantly I mean viewership merchandise revenue I mean uh, arenas filling them up sold out shows I mean it's just there's no it's, it's not competition so I want to get that out of the way first right secondly the fact that AEW has to continuously bash WWE during their shows, that alone tells me that it's not competition. You're trying to get publicity and get eyes on you because, listen, there's not many on you. And I, for me, if I was in the back of AEW last night and Darby Allen cut that promo, I'd kind of question, him, like, why would you do something like that? And then you have to look at Tony Khan, right, and be like, why are you giving these guys such free range with their promos? Because, listen, Cody Rhodes is the hottest name in wrestling right now. The hottest going into WrestleMania season. And you find it appropriate to kind of reference him on a live show that's supposedly competition? I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. And you go to the people that have jumped shift, right? Cody Rhodes, uh, Jade Cargill, CM Punk. I've seen interviews where Jay Cargill said the goal was always to get to WWE. I think CM Punk went to AEW because he wanted to come back to WWE. Cody Rhodes, uh, you know, who knows? But I think deep down, he's wanted to also come back and win that title that his father never did. So you're seeing a trend here, right? You're seeing a trend. And in terms of people that are jumping ship to come back to WWE, I think that's understandable. But I think there's only maybe about 50-ish percent of that roster that WWE would actually possibly consider. I think it might be even lower. I think it's that, lower than right? that. I think it's lower. I think it, I'm being generous. Yeah, I'm you're, being way you're generous. You're being very generous. So, and then you look at the whole perception of AEW. Oh, well, they're a pro wrestling company. They don't worry about all this and that. And it's like, that's cool. If that's your niche, cool. I get it. But as somebody that is a loyal WWE fan, I can't, I, I feel like I'm taking a step down, right? Like, 
in soccer, how they relegate teams, you know, if you're not having a good season, that's a relegation team right there. I don't have I don't have interest in that. And you see the injuries that happen on live television. I mean, Jeff Hardy got knocked out last night yes. from Sammy Guevara doing yes. a flip. I mean, the the blood, like what's so appealing about people bleeding all the goddamn time? They're I, not allowed I, to cuss anymore, weird. though. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. They're bleeping. Just, they're bleeping me, the cussing now. Yeah. So, again, I think the biggest thing that I want the point I wanted to get out was. WWE and AEW are not in a competition. AEW will forever be an alternative. And I think people need to start understanding that and, and agreeing with it because they'll never, ever cross lines with WWE. H- having played basketball, you, you, you made the reference of, of relegation. To me, it is the equivalent of the NBA and streetball. AEW feels more like street ball to me. It feels like it, it's almost too much of a compliment to, to call it relegation in that that still feels like it's WWE light. It really, what you said about the promos is 100% true. Somebody, I, I understand not wanting to script word for word the promo, but somebody's got to take a look at what you're saying and go, you can't say that. <laughs> like, like you cannot, going into WrestleMania season, if we feel like we're competition, you can't say that. You you don't get to, to say Cody's name. Even if it generates a pop, even if it was for a positive reason, you you just can't do that. And, and like the injury to, to, to Jeff Hardy, that feels like shit that happens on a street ball court. Yeah. And just continuing the match and not like, you see what happened to Shotzi. Shotzi gets injured. They shut the match down. It's a big, it, they make a big deal. WWE's really getting big on this. Like, yeah. fuck the story. Fuck, fuck key, uh, kayfabe. This is real life. We're going to take care of this person. With AEW, it, it does. It is it is insane. I think there was a small point in time, Mike, where it felt like competition. It, it felt like, like Vince McMahon was driving WWE in the wrong direction. And it felt like Tony Khan had accumulated enough of these wild pieces that just in principle, it felt like competition. It was never from a business standpoint, but they had CM Punk. They had, they, they, they were generating interest. And, and I think that at this point, I think Tony Khan's the only person in the IWC who truly believe their competition. I don't think WWE even acknowledges them in, in, in internal meetings anymore. I think at one time there might've been discussions in WWE about like, Hey, we got to pay attention to what they're doing. It's not going to affect us, but we just got to watch. They're going to try and poach people and, and do some things. And now I'm, I'm like you. I feel like WWE looks over at that roster and goes, there's four or five we'll take. Yeah, I think uh, Tony Khan and the IWC at this point are the only ones who feel like they're competition. WWE might, there might have been a time. I just don't, at this point, I think that's all in the rear view mirror. I, there's people in TKO probably don't even know what AEW is inside of that company yeah. that, you know, at, at this point they, they see WWE and they see that as professional wrestling. Yeah. For, like you said, 50%, I think is generous. I think there's four or five guys we could probably name off. That might be a fun topic one day is who, who would you take? Sure. I don't think you ever want Moxley back. I think he's, he's a little bit of a problem. I don't know that yeah. I'd want Darby Allen. He's too little. I don't want Jericho back. MJF, MJF, you take, you take, uh, probably Wardlow, you take just based on size and potential. Wardlow, uh, um, <sighs> shit, that's Britt Baker. I would take Britt Baker. I think she fits. In, I think she fits in into the women's roster. Uh, uh I'd have to look at the roster, man. Yeah, we've seen Tony Storm. Like, I, I guess that Storm. character could work back in WWE, but like, um. Uh, Hobbs is that his name? Yeah, the yeah, big, definitely, the, definitely, yeah. yeah. Powerhouse yeah. Hobbs. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a few that you can throw at the wall and see if they. But stick, they've got like 170 I, fucking people on the roster, so to get yeah, to 50, yeah. percent we got to go. What's that? 60, 70 of them? Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> That'll be a fun topic. We'll do that in the near future. We'll look at. We'll, we'll For pull sure. up the roster and do it. You got anything else? For sure. I'm good, man. I'm looking forward to SmackDown tomorrow. Hell yeah, I am that's, too. Uh, I'm ready. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. Yeah. 
All right, well, that's all the time we have this week for the Casual Wrestling Show. Make sure to like and share this episode as much as you can. As a member of the Casual Wrestling community, feel free to screen record and clip your favorite part of the show on any social media platform. As always, I am the Notorious Nerdy D. That is Milwaukee Mike, and we will see you guys next time. Hey, you better bring it if we debate and going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Hey.